الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اما بعد on Friday, we completed hadith number 354 from the book at Tajreed al Sarih, which is the which is an abridgment of Imam Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi sahih. The next chapter in hadith, the next chapter is Bab Waqt al Fajr, chapter about the time of Fajr. Over the past few lessons, we've been going over the beginning. Ending and the desired and pref- preferred times for each of the salawat. We've completed Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, and Isha. And prior to this, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi also spoke about the virtue of Fajr Salah and now the timing of Fajr Salah. The time of Fajr Salah, the beginning time of Fajr Salah, according to the Unanimous opinion of all of the scholars is when dawn breaks at the crack of dawn. That's when Fajr begins, and it extends from dawn all the way till the rising of the sun. There's one narration from Imam Malik rahmatullahi alayhi, which suggests that. Fajr time does not extend all the way till the rising of the sun. But it only stretches for as long as it does not become very, very bright. I.e. it actually ends a short while before sunrise. That's only one narration. Otherwise, a fatwa according to the madhab of Imam Malik is that Fajr begins at dawn and extends all the way till sunrise. And this is a view of the majority, the clear majority of the scholars. There are one or two scholars who actually believe that Fajr time does not last all the way till sunrise, but only till it becomes very, very bright. Just as there are some scholars who believe that Asr time does not extend all the way till sunset, but it only extends till the yellowing of the sun. The moment the sun begins to dip close to the horizon, before sunset and becomes yellowish red, uh, Asr time, according to some scholars, ends completely. But that's not the view of the majority. The majority say Asr time extends till sunset. And similarly, the clear view of the majority is that Fajr time begins at dawn and extends till sunrise. Now, as I've mentioned before, Imam Bukhari, rahmatullahi alayhi, he will mention a particular point in the chapter heading and then he will try to prove that point with the hadith that he produces under that chapter. Sometimes the hadith are explicit and clear and the relationship between that hadith and the chapter heading is also very evident. At times, because Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi has to select his hadith from a certain collection, the reference isn't as clear or as explicit as one would assume it to be. And this is a case here. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi does not find any, coll- any hadith in his own collection for the Sahih, which explicitly and clearly mentions Fajr time being at the beginning of dawn. So he produces two hadith which in a roundabout way infer or in a roundabout way indicate that Fajr time, the beginning of Fajr time is at the crack of dawn. Hadith number 355 An Anasin radiyallahu anhu anna Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu an It is related from Anas radiyallahu an that Zayd ibn Thabit radiyallahu an haddathahu related to him annahum tasahharu ma'an nabiyya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that they had sahur they had sahur with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam thumma qamu ila salah then they rose for salah qultu I asked kum kana baynahuma what was the 
time difference between the two, qala, he said, qadr khamsina aw sittina ya'ni ayah, approximately 50, the space or the time of 50 or 60 verses. Now, understand the hadith very carefully. <coughs> This is again an abridged version and one has to look at as many narrations of the hadith as possible in order to understand it very clearly. Sayyidina Anas radiyallahu an was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said to him, Anas, I wish to fast tomorrow, so go and find some food for me that I can have for sahur. So Anas radiallahu anhu went away and brought some food for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam so he could have that for sahur. Sahur means the morning meal before the crack of dawn, which a person eats just before he begins a fast. In many of the Indian subcontinent languages, it's referred to as sahri. Sahri is more of an Asian term. The Arabic term is sahur, and it can also be pronounced suhur. So sahur means the last meal before a person has at night, before dawn, in order to prepare oneself for the fast. So the Prophet ﷺ said to Anas I wish to fast tomorrow, bring me some food that I can have for sahur. Anas went away and brought some food back. Then the Prophet ﷺ said to him, go and find someone whom I can share this meal with. So Anas radiallahu anhu went out and Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an was around so he called Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an so Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu an sat down with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and so did Anas radiallahu anhu himself so the three of them the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam Anas and Zayd ibn Thabit radiallahu anhuma all of them had sahur this pre-dawn meal then they all rose for fajr salah now Anas radiyallahu an, for some reason, wasn't mindful of the exact, of the exact time in, from between the meal and Fajr Salah. So in order to ascertain how much time had passed between the end of the Sahur meal and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa standing up for Fajr Salah, he, he asked his companion in the meal, who was? Uh, Zayd radiyallahu an that Zayd how long was it before between the suhoor the meal and fajr salah so uh, Zayd bin Thabit radiyallahu an said that approximately 50 to 60 verses i.e. the time it takes a person to recite 50 to 60 verses of the Quran approximately that much time in between the end of the suhoor meal and the performing of fajr salah so obviously that means that the Prophet ﷺ had his sahur and then rose, prepared himself and went towards the masjid. For, well, then he rose and went towards the masjid to perform Fajr Salah. And he had his meal, his sahur meal, right before the end of time, before the end of uh, Isha time, obviously before the end of the time in which a person can eat. And then as soon as dawn broke, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed his sunnah and then performed fajr salah. Now, so using this hadith, Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi shows that the beginning time of fajr is the crack of dawn. Because by the text of the Qur'an, we learn, we know by the text of the Qur'an that one can eat and drink all the way till the crack of dawn. And this is what the Prophet ﷺ did here. He ate and drank all the way till dawn. And then not long after, just a short while after, he performed his Fajr Salah. So obviously, the beginning of Fajr Salah must be at the crack of dawn. And that's why Imam Bukhari Rahmatullahi proves a point using this hadith. Now I gave that explanation about Sayyidina Anas and Sayyidina Zayd anhuma having sahur with the Prophet wasallam. Why? Because if we look at the text of the hadith, it says, Anas radiyallahu anhu relates that Zayd radiyallahu anhu told him 
that he had sahur with the Prophet sallallahu So Anas radiallahu anhu asked him, how long was it between the sahur of the Prophet sallallahu and him standing up for salah? So Zayd radiallahu anhu said, oh, about 50, 60 verses, i.e. Uh, the time it takes a person to recite 50 to 60 verses of the Qur'an. That's how much time there was between the sahur, the sahri of the Prophet sallallahu and fajr salah. So the impression is Anas radiallahu anhu wasn't there. And Anas radiallahu an was absent. Zayd radiallahu an had sahur. Anas radiallahu an was asking him. Now that's what the that's the impression one would get when reading the text of the hadith. But if you look at all of the narrations, it becomes very clear. In fact, in one narration of Tirmidhi, Sayyidina Anas radiallahu an actually says, "We had sahur with the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam." The next hadith, hadith number 356. And Sahl ibn Sa'ad ibn radiyallahu anhu qal, it is related from Sahl ibn Sa'ad radiyallahu anhu, that he said, كنت أتسحر في أهلي ثم يكون سرعة بي أن أدرك صلاة الفجر مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. I would have sahur in my family. Then it would be hastiness on my part so that I could catch fajr salah with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. Sahar ibn Sa'ad radiyallahu an, another sahabi, he relates that I used to have sahur with my family. And then, in order to catch fajr salah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa in the masjid, thumma taqoom sur'atun bi, it would have to be hastiness on my part. I would have to rush in order to get to the masjid, in order to perform fajr salah with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, this is very similar to the hadith above. Imam Bukhari uses this hadith to prove that by the text of the Qur'an, one can eat and drink in Ramadan or at any other time of the year till the crack of dawn. So, in both these hadith, we learn that the Sahaba and the Prophet ﷺ had sahur, and then not long after, they prayed Fajr Salah. So, what was the t- beginning time of Fajr Salah? It must have been the crack of dawn. And this is how Imam Bukhari explains the beginning time of Fajr. Now, I've explained before that in these chapters we will learn about the beginning and ending time of each of the salawat and we will also learn about the preferred and the desirable time and we've done that for virtually all the salawat just to recap the beginning time of Zuhr is at noon just immediately after noon and the end of Zuhr time is shadow one according to the majority of the ummah and shadow two according to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi. And the preferred time for Zuhr is early in winter and when it's hot with some delay. The beginning time of Asr, according to the majority of the scholars, is shadow one. And according to Imam Abu Hanifa rahmatullahi alayhi, it's shadow two. And it extends till sunset. And the preferred time for Asr Salah, that's the beginning and the end time, and the preferred time for Asr Salah, according to the scholars of the Hanafi fiqh, is to delay it, but not so much that it becomes makruh, but to delay it and to pray it with some delay as long as the sun is high and bright and shining. The beginning time of Maghrib Salah is at sunset, immediately after sunset, and the end time of Maghrib Salah, according to the majority of the scholars, is at the disappearance of Shafaq, which means dusk according to most, and which means white twilight according to Imam Abu Hanifa and a few others. This is the beginning and the end time, but according to the majority of the scholars, in fact all of them, Maghrib Salah should preferably be performed immediately after sunset. That's preferred time. Isha, beginning time, is at the end of Maghrib time, according to the differences, and he extends till Fajr Salah, according to the majority. And all of the differences I've explained before. And the preferred time for performing Isha Salah, according to everybody, is with some delay, till the first third of the night. Till the first third of the night. Now, Fajr Salah, this is the beginning. Crack of dawn, end time, uh, sunrise. What's the preferred time for performing Fajr Salah? According to... Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal and Imam Shafi'i rahmatullahi alayhi. The beginning time for Fajr, sorry, the preferred time for Fajr Salah is immediately after dawn. 
i.e. to perform it in darkness. And according to Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, the, and the scholars of the Hanafi fiqh, the preferred time for Fajr Salah is with some delay, i.e. to pray it in brightness. To pray it in brightness, when there is some light. And there are many hadith that clearly mention that. For example, in a hadith related by Imam Abu Dawood, Imam Tirmidhi, Imam Nasai and Ibn Majah in their sunan, also by Imam Ibn Hibban in his Sahih, Imam Bazzar in his Musnad, and many other scholars, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Asfiru bil fajr, fa innahu a'zamu lil ajr. And it's a very authentic hadith that Asfiru bil fajr, pray fajr in light. Fa innahu a'zamu lil ajr, because this is greater in reward. And in a hadith, in one narration of this hadith, recorded by Imam Ibn Hibban in his Sahih, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, كُلَّمَا أَصْبَحْتُمْ فِي الْأَجْرِ uh, كُلَّمَا أَصْبَحْتُمْ بِالْفَجْرِ فَإِنَّهُ أَعْظَمُ لِلْأَجْرِ That the more, the more later in the morning you pray your fajr, the more rewarding it is. And in a hadith related by Imam Nasa'i rahmatullah in the Sunan, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, كُلَّمَا أَسْفَرْتُمْ بِالْفَجْرِ فَإِنَّهُ أَعْظَمُ لِلْأَجْرِ As much as you pray fajr in light, the more rewarding it is. The more light in which you pray your fajr salah, the more rewarding it is. So f- from all of these hadith we learn, and there are many other narrations as well. It's related by Ibrahim al-Nakhi rahmatullah alayhi, uh, a tabi'i scholar uh, who saw and met many of the companions. Imam Ibrahim al-Nakhi rahmatullah alayhi says that none of the Sahaba, the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum did not unite upon, upon any point as much as they united upon praying Fajr in light. Meaning the clear action and practice of the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum was to pray Fajr Salah in light, but not in darkness. So, according to Imam Hanifa rahmatullah and the scholars of the Hanafi fiqh, one should delay, one should not pray Fajr Salah immediately after dawn but one should pray it with some delay so that it's closer to sunrise rather than immediately after dawn and one should pray it in light because in the morning let's say if Fajr time extends for about two hours from dawn till sunrise let's say it's about two hours it remains very very dark until about one hour fifteen minutes of Fajr Salah of, of that time then it, begin, it begins to become brighter it becomes brighter gradually so once it starts becoming brighter, one really see, begins to see light at about half an hour before sunrise. So according to the scholars of the Hanafi fiqh, one should perform Fajr Salah in light. And Imam Tahawi rahmatullahi has explained this beautifully. He says, and this is also the view of Imam Muhammad rahmatullahi alayhi, Imam Muhammad and Imam, uh, Imam Tahawi rahmatullahi alayhi says that one should begin praying Fajr Salah whilst there is still some darkness. And obviously, because Fajr, Fajr Salah is performed with very long surahs, throughout the Salah it will become brighter. And once a person finishes Fajr Salah, it will be quite bright. So he will be able to act on this hadith of praying Fajr Salah in brightness, in light. So this is a preferred time. Otherwise, the valid time is all the way from dawn till sunrise. Now, another important point here is that with regards to these preferred times, I explained a principle about last week, that it was a sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and the ulama have obviously adopted and encouraged this sunnah, that regardless of the preferred time, if more people will congregate and come together at a time other than the preferred time, then one should give preference to the congregation rather than the preferred time. For example, in Isha Salah, we learn in hadith number 347, that the Prophet Sallallahu would pray Isha at different times. If he saw the Sahaba radiallahu anhum having gathered in the masjid, he would perform Isha early. And if he saw that they had not gathered yet, then he would delay it. However, the preferred practice of the Prophet Sallallahu was to delay Isha Salah. However, if he saw that many of the people had gathered before, then in order to make it easy for the Ummah, he would perform Isha Salah early. And I explained in that hadith, that the principle is that regardless of the preferred time, one should perform 
uh, if the imams of the masajid should try to see when people will congregate more and when they expect the largest congregation even if it's not at the preferred time maybe they should hold the salah then and I explained that this is the practice throughout the year because Fajr Salah is performed with delay i.e. about half an hour 35 minutes before sunrise that's a preferred time half an hour 35 minutes before sunrise but in Ramadan especially in all the masajid even though the preferred time is to perform Fajr Salah in light as I've just explained because we will expect a larger congregation and it's easier for everybody to have their sahur and then come to the masjid and perform fajr salah because they have been up for many people normally stay awake for part of the night in Ramadan to do ibadah therefore it's easy and better and more uh, more convenient for everybody to gather immediately after dawn and that's the practice all over the place now I've just explained that the preferred time for fajr is to pray in some light however these two hadith which Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi has just quoted here show that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi had sahur and then prayed fajr salah immediately so that's not in light and the explanation is that the the, these two hadith are most probably about Ramadan, for Ramadan. And that's a practice because more people are expected to gather immediately after Sahur in Ramadan. This was the practice of the Prophet ﷺ. That in Ramadan, maybe that these two hadith are about Ramadan, that the Prophet ﷺ did Sahur. And then after Sahur, he prayed Fajr Salah. Also, Imam, Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim both relate to hadith. From Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu anhu. Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiyallahu ta'ala anhu says that I never saw the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pray any salah out, out of its time except for two salah. Maghrib and Isha, which he performed together in the plain of Muzdalifah during the Hajj. Because what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did, and this is what everybody should do, is that. On the ninth of Dhul Hijjah, on the ninth day of the month of Dhul Hijjah, after having spent the day at Arafat, the Prophet ﷺ did not pray Maghrib Salah in Arafat. Rather, he delayed the Maghrib Salah until Maghrib Salah time ended. And then he prayed Maghrib Salah in Isha time in the plain of Muzdalifah, to which he traveled after the plain of Arafat. So there he went and he prayed Maghrib together with Isha in Isha time. So Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu says, I never saw the Prophet sallallahu pray any salah out of its normal time, except these two. Maghrib salah, he prayed out of Maghrib salah time in Isha time in the plain of Muzdalifah on the 9th of the Hijjah. And then the, he says, the Prophet sallallahu spent the night in Muzdalifah and then as soon as dawn broke, the Prophet ﷺ prayed Fajr Salah. Now, the time for Fajr is dawn, is after dawn. So why is Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu saying that the Prophet ﷺ prayed Fajr Salah out of its time? When he prayed it in time after dawn, i.e. the normal practice of the Prophet ﷺ was to pray Fajr Salah in light. In light. But on that one occasion, Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu anhu saw him praying Fajr Salah immediately after dawn in darkness. So that hadith also, that hadith is related by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. That hadith also shows that the normal practice of the Prophet sallallahu was to pray Salah, Fajr Salah with some delay in light. That's a sunnah, that's a preferred time. And occasionally he would pray in darkness or immediately after dawn as these two hadith also suggest and the ulama explain that maybe these two hadith were referring to uh, the month of Ramadan the next chapter and hadith babu salati ba'd al-fajri hatta tartafi' al-shams chapter about salah after fajr until the sun rises high Having completed the five timings of Salah, Imam Bukhari Rahmatullah now moves on to a few other topics about the timings of Salah, such as what's the ruling of praying Salah after Fajr? I explained before briefly, and these are the relevant chapters that we've actually come to now, that there are five times during the day when Salah is forbidden. 
Imam Muslim rahmatullahi alayhi relates a hadith in his sahih from a sahabi radiyallahu anhu says that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam would forbid us from praying salah or performing sajda or burying our dead at three times during the day at sunrise until the sun had risen completely in high at noon until the sun had declined afternoon and at sunset until the sun had set completely so those are three times and then from many other hadith we also learn that there are two other times in which salah is forbidden after fajr and after asr and i will explain these more as we come across the hadith so Babu Salati Ba'd al Fajr Hatta Tartafi Ashams, chapter about Salah, after Fajr until the sun rises high. Hadith number three hundred and fifty seven. Anim na Basan the Allah Anhuma Qal. It is related from Abdullah na Basa the Allah Anhuma. That he said, Shahid Indi Rijalum Murdiyum. Honorable and trustworthy men have testified to me. Wa Allahum Indi Umar and the most honored and trustworthy amongst them in my eyes is umar radiyallahu an an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naha an salat ba'd as subh that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade salah after fajr hatta tashruq al shams until the sun rose or until the sun rises wa ba'd al asr hatta taghrib and after asr until the sun sets abdullah ibn abbas radiyallahu anhu says that Men who are honorable and trustworthy have testified to me. Now that doesn't mean that they actually formally came before him and testified as one does in court. But this word shahid indi or shahid in Arabic, literally it means testify, but it also means to inform and to announce. For example, in a verse of the Quran, Allah has to say, shahid Allah annahu la ilaha illa Allah. Shahid Allah annahu la ilaha illa hu. That Allah testifies that there is no God but He. That Allah does not need to testify before anybody. Now that's the literal translation, but the meaning of uh, testify here in this context is that Allah has announced, Allah has informed. So Abdullah ibn Abbas says that a number of many men who are all honorable and trustworthy have informed me. And out of all of these men, the most honored and trustworthy amongst them, in my view, is Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu. That there were many sahaba radiyallahu anhu who told me quite clearly. And of them, I hold Sayyidina Umar radiyallahu anhu in the highest esteem. They testified and they informed me categorically that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade salah at two times. After Fajr until the sun rises and after Asr until the sun sets. That's very clear that one is not to pray any salah after one has performed Fajr and after one has performed Asr. Now, I would just like to explain one thing here. Fajr time is from the crack of dawn till sunrise. And Asr time is from, let's say, shadow one or shadow two till Maghrib, till sunset. Now, there is a difference between these two times. And understand this very carefully. Let's say Fajr time begins at four o'clock. And sunrise is at six. And Asr time begins at six in the evening, which is the case today, and ends at 8.15 at Maghrib. So Fajr is from four till six, and Asr in the evening is from six till eight, for example. Now, the meaning of no Salah being performed after Fajr and after Asr is that once a person has prayed his own Fajr Salah, either alone or with the congregation, then after that, after that, 
One should not pray any other salah till the sun rises. And once a person has prayed his own asr salah, either in private or with the congregation, one should not pray any salah till the sun sets. Now, Fajr time begins at four. If someone prays Fajr Salah at quarter past four, either alone at home, or with a congregation, elsewhere, or even in the masjid, now that person and all of those people who have prayed Fajr Salah cannot pray any nafal Salah, any Salah, from quarter past four till six. If someone in the same house, no, sorry, now, similarly with Asr, Asr begins at 6. If someone prays Asr at 5 past 6, then from after that Asr Salah all the way till sunset, they cannot pray any of the Salah. However, if, for example, in the same house, one person prays Fajr, uh, Asr Salah at 5 past 6, for them, there is no Salah. It's not permissible for them to pray any Salah all the way till sunset. Someone else in the house has not prayed Asr yet. And they plan to pray Asr at 7. So all the way from 6 till 7, because they themselves have not prayed Asr, they can pray as many Nafal as they want. They can pray as many Nafal as they want. Because the prohibition of praying any Salah after Fajr and Asr is not to do with the time, or is not to do with when the congregation prayed, but it's to do with when the individual has prayed. So if for some reason someone ends up praying Asr only half an hour before sunset, well, all the way till they pray Asr, they can pray as much nifl as they want, as many nifl as they want. Now I've just explained that in Asr time, before Asr, one can pray as many nifl as one wants. There's no harm in that at all. Can one do the same for Fajr? Well, no one shouldn't. In fact, during Fajr time, only two salah should be performed. During the whole of Fajr time, only two salah should be performed. The two sunnats for Fajr, followed by the two farah. So it's forbidden to pray any salah after one's Fajr, all the way till sunrise. Just as it's forbidden to pray any salah after one's Asr, all the way till sunset. However, the explanation I gave about someone praying nifl salah or any other salah before asr, in asr time, does not apply to fajr. Because we learn from many ahadith that the Prophet ﷺ never ever prayed any other nifl salah after the break of dawn except for the two sunnats of fajr. And in fact, in one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ actually says that one should not pray any salah after the crack of dawn except two rak'at, which mean the two rak'at of sunnah, and then farad fajr salah. I hope that's clear. So, as far as asr is concerned, until one prays one's asr, whether alone or in congregation, till that time, even in asr time, one can pray other salawat. But after one has prayed one's own asr, one cannot pray any salah till sunset. But as far as Fajr is concerned, after the break of dawn, it is, prefer, it is prefer, preferable and it is desirable that a person does not pray any nafl, any salah, after the break of dawn, except for the two Fajr sunnah. And then it's undesirable to pray any salah after the crack of dawn, except the two Fajr sunnah. And then after the two farad, it's forbidden to pray any salah till sunrise, till the sun rises. Next hadith, hadith number 358. And Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu It is related from Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu that he said, Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, La taharraw bi salatikum tulu'a shams wa la ghurubaha. Do not seek with your salah the rising of the sun, nor its setting. This hadith is very simple and clear, which means that do not delay your fajr and your asr till the end time, obviously, so that you end up praying fajr and asr salah 
whilst the sun is all close to the sun rising and setting. One. Two, do not pray any other salah. Do not pray any other salah. Especially at these two times, whilst the sun is rising and whilst the sun is setting. Now the reason why the Prophet ﷺ has forbidden people from praying salah at the time of the sun rising and setting is because of a few things. In one hadith, the Prophet ﷺ clearly explains that the sun rises and sets in between the two horns of shaitan. The sun rises and sets in between the two horns of shaitan. Now, how is that? Wallahu alam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has informed us that the sun rises and sets in between the two horns of shaitan. In some narrations, upon the two horns of shaitan. And we believe what Allah and Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say without questioning it. We believe in it wholeheartedly. Number two, in some ahadith, the Prophet ﷺ has also clearly mentioned that the kuffar, the disbelievers, especially those who worship the sun, they specifically worship the sun at the time of its rising and its setting. So the believers should not allow their acts of worship or allow their salah or allow their prostrations to resemble the prostrations of those people who worship the sun because they deliberately worship the sun and prostrate to it at the time of its rising and setting. So these two reasons are quite prominent in the prohibition of salah at the time of the sun rising and setting. One, because this may resemble the worship of those who hail the sun as a god. And number two, because the sun rises and sets in between or upon the two horns of shaitan. Hadith number 359. Also, this hadith, do not seek the rising of the sun or its setting with your salah. This hadith also supports a view of those scholars, such as Imam Abu Hanifa, rahmatullahi alayhi, and the scholars of the Hanafi fiqh, who say that if someone catches one rakah of fajr salah or asr salah, then one should not continue. Well, if someone catches one rakah of salah before the rising of the sun or before the setting of the sun, then one should not continue to pray salah. Because these hadith which forbid salah at, the, at those two times are very categorical and they take precedence over all of the hadith, which some of which may suggest that it's permissible to pray salah. But those suggestive hadith well, those hadith which suggest permissibility may also mean something else. And I've already covered that before, so I won't repeat myself, but just to add as a point of reference, that this hadith is also part of that collection which strongly forbid praying at the time of the sun rising or setting. The next hadith, hadith number 359, Umar, Umar, Ibn Abdullah ibn says, وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم, That Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said, إِذَا طَلَعَ حَاجِبُ الشَّمْسِ فَأَخِّرُ الصَّلَاةَ حَتَّى تَرْتَفِعَ When the tip of the sun rises, then delay salah until the sun rises high. وَإِذَا غَابَ حَاجِبُ الشَّمْسِ and when the tip of the sun sets, or when the tip of the sun disappears, فَأَخِّرُ الصَّلَاةَ حَتَّى تَغِيبُ Then delay salah until the sun sets altogether. Now, we learn quite a few things from this hadith. Again, this hadith should also be taken into consideration when studying that other hadith in which hadith number 354 in which the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says when one of you finds one sajda before of salat al asr before the sun sets then let him complete his salah and when one of you finds one sajda of fajr salah before the sun rises then let him complete his salah now some scholars have taken that to mean that 
Oh, even whilst the sun is rising and setting, you should continue praying your Fajr and Asr Salah. And I explained that the ulama of the Hanafi fiqh disagree with that. And they say that hadith can be understood in many different ways. And I've given those explanations. Especially when we take these hadith into consideration, which explicitly forbid anyone continuing with their Salah whilst the sun is rising or setting. Because it says here, when the, sun, when the tip of the sun rises, then delay Salah until it rises high. Now, there's a difference of wording. Prophet ﷺ doesn't just simply say that when the, until the sun rises, he says until the sun rises high. And with regard to sunsets, he says until when the sun sets. Now remember this, when the sun sets, as soon as the sun sets, Maghrib time begins and it's, pref- it's preferable to pray Maghrib Salah as soon as the sun sets. There's no karahiyat, there's no disapproval or undesirability in praying any salah, including Maghrib salah, immediately after Maghrib, immediately after sunset. However, with Fajr, it's different. Sorry, with sunrise, it's different. In many ahadiths, it's been clearly mentioned that one should not pray any salah until not only has the sun risen, but until the sun rises quite high. Until the sun rises quite high. For example, in that hadith which we quoted some time ago about the Prophet ﷺ missing Fajr Salah with the Sahaba radiallahu anhu. And then they woke up, the Prophet ﷺ told them to move on. We, could, we prayed it, we studied it in Kitab al Tayyimum. And then afterwards he told Bilal radiallahu anhu to give a and then they prayed Salah. The Prophet ﷺ did not perform Fajr Salah until after some time in order to allow enough time for the sun to rise high. Similarly here, the Prophet ﷺ says, when the tip of the sun rises, then delay salah hatta tartafi' until the sun rises. And the meaning of tartafi' here means irtifa' meaning actually high. Not until it just rises, until it appears. And when the tip of the sun disappears, then delay salah until the sun sets. So there's a difference between the immediate timing after sunrise and after sunset. The immediate time after sunset is, is not makruh and undesirable. So one can pray any salah, including maghrib salah, immediately after sunset. But the immediate time after sunrise, it's still undesirable. So one should not pray any salah, neither nafal or even one's own fajr, if one has delayed it until after some time, until one allows the sun to rise quite high. And there are many hadith which clearly explain that. So, even if one misses Fajr, then one should allow for some time after Fajr Salah. Similarly, when one, if someone should perform Nafal Salah after Fajr, such as Salatul Ishraq, then one should wait for some time till the sun rises high, not immediately after Fajr. And what's the amount of time that a person should allow? Approximately 20-25 minutes. At least 20 minutes. At least 20 minutes. But that's only applicable after Fajr, after sunrise. So till about 20 minutes after sunrise, the time still remains undesirable for any salah. But that's not the case after Maghrib. Hadith number 360. Hadith of Abi Hurayrata radiyallahu anhu anna nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam naha an bay'atayn wa an libsatayn taqaddam. The hadith of Abu Hurayrata radiyallahu anhu that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam forbade two kinds of selling and two kinds of clothing. That hadith has passed. Hadith number 241. It's in Kitab al-Salah, the chapter of clothing oneself, remaining, well, it's in the chapter of the undesirability of being unclothed in Salah. Hadith number 241. Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu relates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa forbade two kinds of sale. Two kinds of trade. Limas and nibad, touching and throwing. And that a person should wrap himself completely in a samma way, and that a person should cloak himself well, that a person should do ihtiba in only one cloth. I've explained that hadith thoroughly on that occasion. Uh, both kinds of trading, sale, 
and both kinds of clothing. So I won't repeat myself, I refer the listeners to that, Hadith number 241. Imam Zainuddin Zabidi, the one who's abridged Imam Bukhari Sahih, he says here that the Hadith of Abu Huraira radiallahu an about the two different kinds of trading and the two different kinds of clothing that the Prophet sallallahu forbade has passed, and that's it, Hadith number 241. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi produces another narration of the same Hadith here under this chapter. Because part of it has passed, Imam Zainuddin Zabidi does not repeat that uh, part which has already passed. But he says, in this narration, وَزَادَ فِي هَذِهِ الرِّوَايَةِ There's an additional wording, and that is, in this narration, he added, وَعَنْ salatain That the Prophet wasallam also forbade two salah. He forbade two kinds of trade. He forbade two kinds of clothing. And he also forbade two kinds of salah. نَهَا عَنِ الصَّلَاةِ بَعْدَ الْفَجْرِ حَتَّى تَطْلُعَ الشَّمْسِ He forbade salah after fajr until the sun had risen. And he forbade salah after asr until the sun had set. Until the sun had set. Now, the hadith is clear. It's very similar to the hadith we've just covered. And... I'll complete one more hadith and then I'll explain one, two things and then I'll go over the timings of Salah again before the Adhan for Isha. Isha Adhan will be at 9.35 inshallah and Isha Jama'ah will be at quarter to ten. The next chapter and hadith, Babun, La Yataharra Salat Qabl Ghurub Shams, chapter, one should not seek Salah before the setting of the sun. Again, it's very similar to what we've covered before. That one should not pray any salah after asr till sunset. And one should specifically not try to pray any salah, even that the asr of that day. Of course, if one has delayed it, then one has no choice. But this is there's a great um, in a hadith related by my Muslim Rahmatullah in his Sahih, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says Tilka Salat al Munafiqeen, Tilka Salat al Munafiqeen, Tilka Salat al Munafiqeen. يجلس أحدهم حتى إذا كانت الشمس على قرن الشيطان أو قال بين قرن الشيطان قام فصلى أربعة فقام فنقر أربعة لا يذكر الله فيهن إلا قليلا. In a hadith related by Muslim the Sahih Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says this is the salah of the hypocrites. This is the salah of the hypocrites. This is the salah of the hypocrites. One of them remains seated until when the sun is upon the two horns of shaitan or in between the two horns of shaitan he rises and then فَنَقَرَ arba'a he pecks four times لا يذكر الله فيهن إلا قليلا he does not remember Allah in those four rakaat except very little so the Prophet ﷺ describes a person who unnecessarily delays his asr salah remains seated or busy with other things delays his asr salah until when the sun is about to set, meaning the sun is preparing to set. And it's during that time, towards the end, when it sets in between the two horns of shaitan, or upon the two horns of shaitan, right towards the end of the time, this man stands up. <coughs> and then the Prophet ﷺ doesn't say, فَصَلَّى أَرْبَعَا فَنَقَرَى أَرْبَعَا He pecks four times, just like a hen or a bird pecks. The Prophet ﷺ describes his rapid salah that he will stand up and Allah Akbar and ruku and sajda so fast in that way. He describes it as pecking four times. He pecks four times. He pecks four rak'at. لا يذكر الله فيهن إلا قليلا. He does not remember Allah therein but very little. So the Prophet ﷺ describes such a salah which is delayed right towards the end of Asr time as being the salah of the hypocrites. And he says thrice, this is the salah of the hypocrites, this is the salah of the hypocrites, this is the salah of the hypocrites. So one should not delay one's salah. And one should definitely not pray any nafal salah or any other salah after asr. The, so chapter, one should not seek salah before the setting of the sun. Hadith number 361, and Mu'awiyah radiyallahu anhu qal, it is related from Mu'awiyah radiyallahu anhu that he said, إِنَّكُمْ لَتُصَلُّونَ صَلَاةً لَقَدْ صَحِبْنَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَمَا رَأَيْنَاهُ يُصَلِّيهَا وَلَقَدْ نَهَا عَنْهَا يَعْنِ الرَّكَعْتَيْنِ بَعْدَ الْأَسْرِ Verily, you pray a salah. We remained in the company of Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we did not see him praying this salah. And verily, he has forbidden this salah. 
meaning two raka'at after asr. Understand this hadith very carefully. Sayyidina Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala an was a companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi the son of Abu Sufyan, and also the brother of one of the wives of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ramlah, the daughter of Abu Sufyan, whose name was, whose gunya was Umm Habiba, more famously known as Umm Habiba radiyallahu anha. She was the daughter of Abu Sufyan, and this was her brother, Sayyidina Muawiyah radiyallahu anha. Sayyidina Muawiyah radiyallahu ta'ala an saw some people praying two rak'ah salah after asr. And he stopped them and told them that you pray these two, you pray a salah. And the people who, who he saw praying this salah after Asr were not companions, they were people who came after the companions. So he said, strange, you not pray a salah so regularly after Asr. We, Sahaba, we actually remained in the company of the Prophet ﷺ. And we never saw him pray these salah. After Asr. In fact, forget seeing him praying Salah after Asr. He explicitly forbade it. He forbade Salah after Asr. Two raka'at after Asr. So this hadith is just goes along with the other hadith that one should not pray any Salah after Asr. Now, I explain, I said I'll explain one or two things. Number one, we've. Um, this topic is quite long, so inshallah I will continue with it in the next lesson, next Tuesday. And I will explain more about uh, which salah are not permissible after asr and fajr. However, what's the ruling about qadha salah? Can a person pray qadha salah after asr and after fajr or not? Shallah will explain in the next lesson. <coughs> Similarly, can a person pray salat al janaza after asr and after fajr? Again, I will explain in the next lesson. If a person is reciting Qur'an after Fajr and after Asr, and he, perf- uh, he comes across a sajj- sajda of Dilawah, should he perform the sajda of Dilawah after Fajr and after Asr, or should he delay it till after sunrise and after sunset? Inshallah, again, I'll explain that in the next lesson. Uh, I will also explain more about Salat, uh, other Nafal Salat, such as Tahiyyatul Masjid. When a person comes into the Masjid after Asr and after uh, Fajr, should one perform the two raka'at of Tahiyyatul Masjid? No. Because obviously the Prophet has forbidden it. This is quite clear. And inshallah I'll explain more about that in the next lesson also. So those things I will explain next Tuesday. Um, before the Adhan I'll just go over the timings of Salah according to the Hanafi fiqh. Because on each, um, on each Salah I've given a lot of detail about the difference of opinion amongst the scholars regarding the times. And I've mentioned virtually all the different timings and the differences of opinion regarding the beginning, end, and the preferred times according to various scholars, especially the four imams of fiqh. But I won't repeat that here. Just for the ben- Since we've completed the five salawat today, just for the benefit to want to know, of those who want to know the beginning and end times, according to the Hanafi fiqh and the preferred times, this is a brief summary. The beginning time of Zuhr is immediately after noon and he extends till shadow two. Well, I'm going to have to explain this difference. The beginning time of Zuhr is immediately after noon and he extends till shadow two, sorry, shadow one according to Imam Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad of the Hanafi scholars and Imam Tahawi of the Hanafi scholars. And he extends to shadow two according to Imam Abu Hanifa. So even according to the Hanafi fiqh, one should try to perform one's dhuhr before shadow one. Before shadow one. So the beginning of time, beginning time of dhuhr is at noon, immediately after noon, end time is at shadow one, or shadow two, preferably before shadow two, one. The preferred time for dhuhr, with some delay in winter, in winter, sorry, in summer, and in heat, and at the beginning, in winter. Asr time begins at shadow one, according to Imam Abu, Imam Abu Yusuf, Imam Muhammad, and Imam Tahawi of the Hanafi scholars, and at shadow two, according to Imam Abu Hanifa. But preferably one should only perform Asr after shadow two. 
and he extends all the way to Maghrib, sunset. And the preferred time for performing Asr is, is with some delay, not immediately at the beginning of Asr time, but with some delay, but only as long as the sun remains high and bright and shining. It becomes makruh to delay Asr Salah, undesirable to delay Asr Salah, until the, the time the sun begins to become yellow, sun grows yellow. Now that's about 45 minutes, 45 minutes before Maghrib. To put it simply, one should preferably pray Asr Salah with some delay, as long as the sun is bright, but most certainly before, at least about four, 45 minutes before uh, Maghrib. Because that's when the sun begins to grow yellow and orange. The beginning time of Maghrib, according to the Hanafi fiqh, is sunset. And the end time of Maghrib, according to Imam Abu Yusuf and Imam Muhammad, of the Hanafi scholars, as well as Imam Tahawi, is red dusk. <coughs> and according to Imam Abu Hanifa, it's twilight, bright white twilight. But the preferred time, the desirable time of performing Maghrib, according to everybody, is immediately after Maghrib. The sooner the better. The beginning time of Isha is when Maghrib ends. And he extends all the way till Fajr, the crack of dawn. And the preferred and desirable time of performing Isha Salah is with some delay, but till the first third of the night. This is the best and most rewarding time. If someone delays it after that, then it's still rewarding and good till one half of the night, but not as good as one third. And then it becomes mildly undesirable to delay it after half of the night till Fajr, even though it's still permissible. And it's not extremely undesirable, it's mildly undesirable if a person delays it without any reason. The beginning time of Fajr is a crack of dawn, unanimously. And the end time of Fajr is, this, is sunrise, again unanimously. And the preferred time of performing Fajr Salah is in light, in brightness, which is preferably about 35 minutes, about half an hour, 35 minutes before sunrise. These are the preferred times and the beginning and end times according to the Hanafi fiqh. And I've mentioned that even amongst the Hanafi scholars, there's a difference of opinion about when Dhuhr ends and Asr begins and when Maghrib ends and Isha begins. But the Timetables which are published from the Hanafi Masajid will always have shadow two as the end of Zuhr and the beginning of Asr. Will, al will always have white twilight, not red dusk, but white twilight as the end of Maghrib and the beginning of Isha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us a tawfiq to perform salah in the preferred times according to that, in that manner which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May I also say the preferred times are the preferred times. However, on many occasions, the imams of the masajid and the timetables of the masajid will follow that sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which says that when you expect a larger congregation, then regardless of the preferred time, hold your salah at the time of the largest congregation. May Allah give us the tawfiq to understand. Sallallahu wa sallam ala abduhi wa rasooli nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Subhanakallah wa hamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta mustafa. This lecture was given by Shaykh Abu Yusuf Riyadhul Haq and has been presented to you by Al Kothar Productions. For further information, additional lectures and books, contact us on 0121 or alternatively by post at Al Kothar Productions, P.O. Box 6008, Birmingham, B10 0UW. United Kingdom, or visit our website at www.alkotharacademy.org. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.